Body composition is something like, yeah, yeah it's always a nice to have, and you just do it, and you just measure the body fat, and yeah, lock it, so to speak, right? It's a little bit flying under the radar. Don't get me wrong, it's no offense against anybody. I'm just talking about my experience and common practice, what I've seen out there. But there are two, two three things with body composition beyond just you know, your, your fat, uh, fat value. When people talk about body composition, they often think, oh, it's about the body fat and how much fat do I have because I don't want to carry too much, too much body fat with me. Well, fair enough, you don't want to do that. But one thing often forgotten, you talked about lactate initially. You talked about lactate initially. And lactate is measured in a unit millimoles per liter. However, we don't even talk about the liters. In most cases, it's like, yeah, it's three millimoles, four millimoles, 10 millimoles, eight millimoles. No, it's millimoles per liter. It's a little bit ironic because if I talk about VO2, uh, everybody talks about per kg. And then the question comes up, how much kg, how much kilograms are there? When I talk about what's per kilogram, the question comes up, how many kilograms do you have? Same thing with the millimoles per liters. It's a normal division. However, nobody's asking for how many liters are there. So what I'm trying to talk about here, what I'm trying to tell you is that lactate dilutes in water. It's water soluble. And if you have an athlete with more fat, percentage-wise more fat, that obviously means that percentage-wise body water is less. And vice versa, if you have an athlete with lower body fat, percentage-wise, the athlete has to have more body water. The same is true for somebody, for example, doing weight training in the gym. If you do weight training in the gym, you grow muscle mass. Muscle is approximately 75, 78% water, which means you have more muscle, you have more water, right? We just talked about how a lactate shuttles between muscles, okay? So you can another thing that comes out of body composition is glycogen. Glycogen is stored in the muscles. The more muscles you have, the more glycogen you have. The higher you train, the more glycogen you have. If you change your diet, more glycogen you have. It's obviously the most precious fuel, right? Um, if you haven't seen it, we have, a, I think, a very good um, blog article about it, why you need to think about glycogen that you have in your working muscles and not in the whole body, because it cannot um, transfer from, uh, um, you know, from upper body to lower body, for example. And what you can see here, sorry, I, di I, didn't, I didn't have the red circle, um, for the full one, but look at the body fat, just a little bit above the red circle. Everything same is the same. 60 kilograms, 180 centimeters. One time is 15% body fat, one time is 25% body fat. Look at how much change you have in glycogen. And if you want to plan race, pacing and fueling, 120 grams of glycogen, that's huge. That is an additional 30, 40 watts on the bike, because this is an hour longer running. So don't underestimate that, what you can do with good body composition data. 